My name is Alexis. If it's your first time here, if you're just clicking on this video, hello, welcome. So just a little bit about myself. I am a 31 year old married corporate girl. I work a nine to five. I am your regular everyday girl, you know? And I am about to get ready to partake in the most interesting journey of not just my life, but me and my husband's life, our lives. Michael, do you wanna come say hello? You won't see much of him. He will be mostly behind the camera, but I did wanna introduce you to the most important person of my life, my honey dip. So yesterday, after we left the St. Arnold Brewery, we ended up going to uh, Michael's cousin's house to celebrate his birthday. And it was just family's house. We were just outside in the garage and we had kind of started I think we kind of started like, we had like a couple like tequila shots, which tequila is typically my girl. We never have an issue. And she wasn't yesterday either, but we were kind of sitting there and had like maybe one or two shots. And typically I'm just like, cool. But it was very humid out there. All of a sudden, stomach started to burn. And typically I never have this type of feeling. My stomach started to burn. And then all of a sudden I just felt like I needed to get up. So I got up. And I had been sitting in the same chair since I had gotten there. I had eight in that chair. I did everything in that chair, never moved. And when I'd gotten up, I had, when I felt like my stomach was burning, I kind of told Michael and we were kind of getting up to like leave because it was just kind of like, okay, well the party was dying down anyway. And all of a sudden walking towards the car, I just pass out. I pass out, I black out kind of for like a few seconds. And when I kind of come to, I feel Michael grabbing me. You know when you're drunk versus you know when something else is wrong. I truly felt like something else was going on with my body and I just could not identify what it was. So I kind of was getting scared because it didn't feel like I needed to throw up. It just felt like I just couldn't keep my eyes open. I just felt like I was sweating. It was already hot outside. So it was kind of hard to tell between two. But um, yeah, so, Immediately family started like helping me out giving me a, like a cold towel They called the ambulance and I had to get rushed to the hospital last night I was in the emergency room last night and that was a definitely a scary experience for me and my family because we did not know what was going on. Turns out that I was just very dehydrated. Being in Houston, surviving Houston, you have to stay very hydrated. Like I've lived in Houston 31 years, I've never been that dehydrated, but it's the first time for everything and I'm not as young as I used to be, which is exactly what the nurse told me. She's, he was like, you are not a spring chicken anymore. You are older now, so you just gotta make sure you stay hydrated, which I thought I was, but hey, you can never be hydrated enough, so yeah. You're gonna see me with tumblers now, you're gonna see me with all that because I'm about to take me out. <laughs> Anyway, I am doing fine today. I've rested up. It's about four o'clock in the afternoon. We have slept all day. All in all, I'm doing great. So, I'm about to head out to go get some burgers because I had a taste for burger and a milkshake. So we're gonna go try this new place called Rodeo, Rodeo Burger, Rodeo Shack, something like that off of Dallas Street here in Houston. And we're gonna see what it's talking about. We always go to the same burger places. So this is kind of like stepping out of our comfort zone. Before we go, I wanted to kind of give you a OOTD. Um, I'm wearing something super simple, so nothing much here. But I have on this my favorite activewear line, which is Honor. I have the top. Uh, on and have the shorts on and for shoes I have my little Nike Nike shoes on and then I have my little Lulu, Lululemon 
fanny pack. We are no purse today. I have my braids in, which have been a lifesaver. Y'all gonna see me in these braids forever, okay? Y'all gonna look up and say, dang, Alexis always wear braids. Yes, she does, because it's really no other style for me these days. You just literally pay $18 to park? No, absolutely not. I'm not happy about it. Okay, so this is the burger I got. I got it, this is called the Marvin Zindler burger. It has lettuce, onion ring, tomato, cheese, bacon, jalapenos, pickles, and then a side of garlic mayo I got it with it, but yeah, this is about to be something serious. about our upcoming journey. So we decided about a month ago that we would finally try IVF. Trying for about two years now to conceive naturally. And now we're just kind of at the point where we're just like, let's try this because we've done, we feel like we've done all that we can do. In 2021, we did conceive and um, we had a miscarriage after about 18 weeks. No heartbeat when we went for our like 18 months, 18 week scan. So leading up into, and I'm just giving you some history on me so you want to kind of understand my journey. That's kind of why I wanted to film this because it's hard to tell a story or hard to share a journey after. It's kind of better when you kind of follow along with it. So this kind of what these vlogs are about is for you to follow me along the way so that I can kind of share what's going on with you as it happens. So. Come 2021, we had a loss, which was so hard because after 18 weeks, you started to kind of get like, okay with what's going on around you. Um, and this happening to you, like you're excited and all that. So yeah, after that, we started to try naturally. Now I had had fibroids, I had it with, with the, that pregnancy. It had just grown large once I actually was pregnant. At the end of 2022, we decided to finally remove the fibroids because we started to think that was the reason why I couldn't conceive because of the fibroids and things like that. So I started to go to an infertility doctor and she recommended that I remove the fibroids. So we removed them at the end of 2022. Jumping into 2023, we have been back to trying again since we've been cleared from that surgery and we just have not been having any luck. So we have tried IUI twice, which is like, it's like insemination. Don't give me the line, but I'll put it somewhere up here on the screen, which pretty much means that it's like turkey basting. I heard someone say that and it's probably the best way to say it. It's pretty much like they take your partner's stuff and they turkey base it into you and you wait about two weeks and you see what happens. It literally takes five minutes to do. You're going to the office and do it. So we tried that twice and hadn't had any luck. Actually, the first time we tried it, I actually got pregnant, but then I had what they call a chemical pregnancy, which is a pregnancy that ends early, early in the early stages. We tried it again and I did not get pregnant. So after that, we finally made the decision to try IVF. So we are about to start the process of IVF. And you know, going into this, I am not gonna lie, I'm very scared because I have a friend who actually just finished the process and she actually got pregnant and then she had a miscarriage. So it's not like these things can't still happen. You know, me having two miscarriages at this point, I'm kind of like, <sighs> I'm accepting of that this could get to that point and happen, you know? Like, I think pregnancy is just a tricky thing no matter what stage you're, you are in it because you can go throughout your whole pregnancy and then at the very end of it, something happened, you know? So it's, it's being okay with those things. I think right now I'm just taking it day by day. We finally kind of started the process because the IVF process is about really a two month process. It's not something that happens really fast because so much goes into it. Right now I am at the stage of taking the birth control to kind of balance, I think that's what they call, balance your hormones and pretty much get them ready for what's about to come. I just received all of my medication in. Hold on, let me get my dogs from outside. 
let me tell you, I am so thankful. Like, I'm so thankful that I have good, great, amazing insurance through my job because if not, we would not be able to do something like this right now. For many people, this is something that they have to save up thousands of dollars for because it's not a cheap process. This process alone, would it even out the medication, cost $14,000. Then the medication, I don't even know how much it costs fully because my insurance covered it, but they did have some issues at one pharmacy and literally they called me to pay for two medications $8,000 and I was like oh no 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 no. we need to go to another pharmacy and it turns out that they were ever able to cover it but just think two medications two medications was $8,000 that they wanted me to pay for completely insane so yeah I am so thankful I don't know how much this process is gonna total I'm gonna get I'll probably get that I know $14,000 for just the actual IVF process doctor's office charges you and then medication is like eight plus I can just say because it's about four or five medications that you have to take and during the whole process to get you ready for the retrieval. And so, yeah, that's all I know right now. I don't know much because that insurance is coming through. I have some of the medication here that I'll share with you. I think this is all of it. The doctor's office actually wants us to go through it and make sure we have everything. It's so much. I need to pull up the list and actually see if everything's everything. But you get this stuff called menopore and this is like injection stuff for the next two weeks well whenever they tell me to start it i'll start doing all these injections at home this is something we have to do at home i have something in the refrigerator i'm not going to take it out but it's just more medication i think that's the piece that goes with i think this this is like the pen that you have to took and you take the medication and that's in the refrigerator and you put it inside of here and then you do whatever you need to do with it more injection stuff, more injection stuff, like a bunch of syringes, medication, gauzes, sponges, needles. It's a lot. It's a whole lot. I kind of go through it and make sure I have everything, but that's what they're telling me to kind of get ready for. Right now, I'm just on the birth control, which I'm supposed to take for two weeks. And once I take that, then on August 30th, which is coming up, I have to go into the doctor's office to also do like the nursing teaching class, which the teaching class just shows you, it just kind of explains how to do all of this, which I'm very interested in seeing. I think this is like an everyday process for like two weeks. I kind of go off of it and then you do the retrieval. If I'm not mistaken, I'm still kind of blurry with the actual to do. I want to definitely take you guys along my journey because I think that a lot of women don't talk about this. A lot of women go through this and you know, for some women, this is the easiest process to have children. For some of us, it is not. And it is a long drawn out process. Like Michael and I, we really wanna have kids. So we're doing everything that we can to be able to have a little one, even if it's just one, but we'll take what we can get now. You know, we just feel blessed to even make it this far, having the insurance to be able to cover this. And I'm just so thankful. And one thing I wanna say before I log off, cause I was just about to, get off and then I realized oh my gosh I hadn't shown y'all some real real stuff right and the real real is that being on this birth control after not being on it for like almost two years let me show you my face so there's a little bit of a filter on this camera which that I don't know how to turn off but I want to show y'all kind of how my face is doing and reacting to these birth control pills right now and all these hormones right before this I was on estrogen so that kind of kicked off it and I was doing research and they were like if you're on estrogen most likely that's why you're getting breakouts because it's like a lot of like stuff being pumped into you so with this process I will say that I'm really scared of how my skin was gonna react I have a really good skincare routine like very serious about my skin and so the fact that my skin is like going through this right now it's a lot for me because like you see here you see here you see here and then it is even started to accumulate on my neck like I've never ever had neck acne in my life but this is what we're going through y'all so if you see me with my glasses if you see me covered up a little like this side is still relatively good like nothing nothing at all i just wash my hands which is why they're on my face but like look at my face and my skin it is just breaking out really badly on this side so yeah that's just some real tea y'all 
Okay, so we are finally dressed. This is what I'm wearing today. I have on this bodysuit. I think I got from Shein a very long time ago. I have on my some pants from Zara. My belt is from, I think, Target. Maybe, maybe not. And then uh, my shoes are some like Gucci platforms that I bought. Let's get up out of here. <laughs> 